Welcome to Counter Narrative News, bringing you the daily news on Thursday, the 12th of January, 2023. A recent un United Nations study has shown that expectant mothers who are giving birth in sub-Saharan Africa and parts of South Asia are seeing in the year 2021 5 million children die before their first birthday and 50% of those 5 million children die before their one, one month old. A woman giving birth to a child is 15 times more likely than her counterpart in, the, in Europe to lose her child uh, within the first year of the child's life and is seven times more likely than her European counterpart to give birth to a stillborn child. This indicates that it's the rights of women in terms of housing, healthcare, etc. that really has to be focused upon to address this and push this back because the study has shown that these statistics have not improved since around 2017. And also, as the world goes in a right-wing trajectory and states across the world are failing to invest properly in their health systems and to give proper wages to staff in those health systems, that staff, that, that, that the staff in the health institutions are leaving in droves their professions, which compounded with the right-wing privatization agendas of most governments is putting women in exactly in this context in an in, in a even more precarious situation. This should be absolutely unacceptable to world humanity and it would be good to see a global movement to demand the rights of these women and children in these regions of the global south. Going to Brazil, Brazil is still seeing an ongoing danger of far-right provocations in loyalty to the previous far-right president of Bolsonaro. Brazil has a history of right-wing dictatorship from 1964 to 1986. Indeed, in a previous recent administration by the Lula, by President Lula of the Workers' Party, the vice president was Dilma Rousseff, who herself was a leftist guerrilla in the underground against the military dictatorship. So Brazilians are well aware and have been experienced in such a right-wing dictatorship and so there's a section of Brazilians who do not want to return back to that. But in this moment in history the right-wing are emboldened and are in the ascendance and they are much stronger than they hitherto have been in Brazil and much is the similar case in other parts and countries of the world. But in somewhat, somewhat more positive news from Brazil, the first ever Minister of Indigenous Peoples has been inaugurated in the form of Sonia Guajajara. In neighboring Peru, clashes are still taking place between the new right-wing government there and supporters of the former President Castillo, who is awaiting detention in tr for, for, for trial. Going to Bangladesh, a report has shown that investigated over a thousand garment factories and the conditions of workers in those factories that many malpractices and and gross exploitation of those workers are taking place including not paying workers properly and also workers being forced to work through the pandemic without any increase of pay some of the beneficiaries of this exploitation are well-known high street um, high street shops and companies like Lidl Gap and H&M. This and also the previous report of, uh, from the United Nations of the situation of mothers in sub-Saharan Africa and in South Asia in terms of stillborn babies, babies dying in their millions before they're one years old and in their millions before they're even one month uh, year old, still points to a global capitalist extracting, extractive looting economy in which the vast populations of Western peoples are benefit benefiting from this, but those who are running these companies and who are actually in charge and have power in this economic relationship are the greatest beneficiaries, pointing still to a form of global economic apartheid that still exists today. Finally, the United States and Russia have clashed at the, Un at the United Nations Security Council over their respective involvement in Africa. 
on the one hand representatives from the European Union and the United States, accuse Russia with some substance that their involvement in places like Sudan, Mali, Libya, Central African Republic and Burkina Faso is showing that the private and viciously racist Wagner group is extracting the natural resources that belong to the African people and are also conducting racist massacres. In response, the Russian deputy ambassador, Ustigeneva, has has thrown it back in the face of the West and the United States, claiming, well, you're doing the same thing in Africa and across the world, and especially in Libya. This is all much of a farcical exchange, really, because both Russia and the West, the West in the, terms, in, in the case of the West, they intervened directly militarily to destroy Libya, and in the case of Russia, they sat on their hands and did nothing about it, and then after Libya was destroyed, they sent their Wagner mercenaries to make some profit and strategic benefit out of that. None of these t two entities, entities seem to be at, for the best interests of, of, of Africans themselves. Just a reminder, counter-narrative news is not funded or backed or speaks on behalf of any state or private funding body at all. It is totally in seeks, seeks to report in the interests of the labouring masses of the world and also in defence of the land and environment on which the labouring masses depend on and live off and work around. Please continue to support us. Please continue to subscribe, like, comment and share. We wish you the best.